This episode of Life Hacker is brought to you by Shopify. Welcome back to Life Hacker's summer series. Today we're going to talk about how to keep your computer running cool and quiet in the summer heat, run down our top posts and videos of the week, and of course our favorite reader submitted video. So let's get going. Hey Life Hacker, I got a question. How do I keep my PC running cool in the summer heat? So over time, your computer's gonna get caked in with a lot of dust, your fans are gonna get a little bit louder, and your computer's gonna have a bit more of a tendency to get hotter. So every once in a while, you're gonna wanna clean it out with a bit of compressed air. I've only had this computer for a year, so it's not as dirty as it could be, but you can see there's definitely some dust caked on all the fans and on the graphics cards I have here. So all you need to do is take your compressed air, start blowing it out, you notice we're outside because it gets really dusty really fast. <clears throat> uh, you, when you do the fans, you're going to want to hold on to them. You don't want them spinning when you do this or you could break them. I have an aftermarket cooler here. If you have the one that came with your computer, you may need to take it out before you blow it. Uh, blow this one last fan up here. Whoa! You may also want to get a Kleenex or some Q-tips and clean out some of the harder to reach places, but this should get you most of the way and once you're done your computer should run a little bit cooler and a little bit quieter. Each week we publish over 150 posts at Lifehacker. Here are a few of our favorites that stood out last week. Every week seems to bring with it news of another security breach of some sort, and this week was no different. First, popular file syncing service Dropbox introduced a bug in a recent update to their website that, for a few hours, allowed anyone to log into any account without requiring a valid password. Creepy, right? And while it appears most people were unaffected, it's a good reminder that if you're syncing sensitive files with Dropbox, for now you need to do the encryption yourself, as detailed in our updated guide to adding a second layer of encryption to Dropbox. On a related note, website Should I Change My Password has pulled the majority of the recently hacked email addresses into one database, so you can check to see if your email address was associated with any of those website hacks. If you're traveling in the coming months, you may want to take a look at the Tipping Etiquette Around the World infographic from personal finance website Mint. It'll help you get a handle on how much to tip by country. And if you're at the airport and looking for a quick free Wi-Fi fix, one of our readers recommends finding a seat near one of those members-only airline lounges and leeching off their free-to-use Wi-Fi connections. Finally, we took a look at five of the best BitTorrent clients available. As good timing would have it, the undisputed favorite, MewTorrent, also updated to version 3.0 last week, adding, among other great features, the ability to start streaming video downloads as soon as you start your BitTorrent download, which means no more waiting for a download to finish before you start enjoying your media. This is soap. You can wash your face with it. Every day at Lifehacker, we get tons of reader-submitted tips. Here's the best video we got from you guys last week. Hey Lifehacker, have you ever wanted to make your own soda? Well, here's an easy way to do it. All you need is some yeast, juice, and thyme. First, dissolve an eighth a teaspoon of yeast in warm water to activate it. Let it proof for about 10 minutes, and then add the mixture to your juice. Do not do this with a glass bottle. It will explode, most likely in your face. After you added the mixture, unscrew the cap and leave the bottle out for a few hours. After a while, you'll start to see bubbles form. Screw the cap tight and leave it to sit for another few hours. When the bottle's firm, go ahead and put it in the fridge. You can either drink it now or wait until it gets cold. A few things to note. Because the yeast is eating up the sugar, the longer you leave it, the less sweet it's going to be. But don't worry about the alcohol content. We're only fermenting for a little bit of time, so it should be pretty low. Also, some juices react with the yeast and form solids at the top. You can just fish that out and it still tastes fine. Experiment with different juices in different fermentation times to see what you like, and enjoy. Have a great tip that you'd like to share with us? Send a response to this video on YouTube, or send your video to us at show at lifehacker.com. Hungry? Thirsty? The refreshment stand is open. If you ever have to sell anything online, then you need to be using Shopify. 
It's the most elegant, customizable, and affordable hosted e-commerce solution available anywhere. With Shopify, you can set up a gorgeous online store in mere minutes that will support a business for life. You'll be able to accept credit cards or other payment solutions, track and respond to all of your orders, and keep your store open to the world 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So stop doing e-commerce the wrong way and join over 14,000 Shopify users today. It's the simplest, most effective way to start an online store. Best of all, you can get the first 60 days free when you enter the coupon code LIFEHACKER at checkout. You'll be supporting the show and representing your brand exactly the way you want to. So go to shopify.com slash lifehacker to learn more and be sure to enter the coupon code LIFEHACKER at checkout. Want more great videos from LifeHacker? Be sure to check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash lifehacker. This week on YouTube, Adam Dachis ran down every use for your iPhone's home button. Everyone knows it brings you to your home screen, but it also reveals multitasking, provides quick iPod controls, and can be customized with various accessibility features. In iOS 5, which is uh, in beta 2 as of this week, uh, you'll be able to double tap it for quick camera access as well. Woods and Gordon showed you how you can use Encipher it to send simple encrypted messages with a bookmarklet. And finally, we took a look at the best way to set up Gmail with desktop mail clients. Gmail's unique conversation style and labeling features have made it notoriously tough on desktop apps, but there's some easy steps you can take to make your life easier. If you're a real Gmail addict and use a Mac, then you can also check out Sparrow and Mailplane two apps built especially for Gmail.